Good morning everyone, welcome back for part two of the Cadillac SRX diagnostics series. So yesterday we diagnosed the ABS problem, defective aftermarket hub in the right rear corner. Unfortunate for the owner, hopefully the other shop will warranty that work. He also wants the check engine light address, that's one of the lights in the Christmas tree. There it is, it's lit up. So, the codes are P0008 and P0017. The death codes, usually it means that the timing chains are stretched. So these first gen GM V6, you know, 3.6 liter engines are notorious for timing chain stretch. So that's going to be my suspicion, but I want to prove it with the oscilloscope because you don't want to say you need chains when it's something else. If you go on YouTube or Google and type in, type in these, these two codes, you'll see some people just say, hey, replace your camshaft position sensors. It fixed my car. I'm like, how is that even possible? They're putting in cheap junk aftermarket cam sensors and apparently fixing their car. I don't know. I, I didn't, you know, diagnose that car, so it might have worked. But I'm highly doubtful that <laughs> it would work in this case. So let's look at live scan data first at these camshaft um, variable system and see what the degrees are, how far off they are. So with the codes present, you can actually see that all the numbers are zero. So exhaust, cam, angle, variance, everything's zero. Intakes are all zero. So the system is locked out. So what I want to do is clear the fault code. Now remember, these two codes are the ones that we're chasing. The 8 and the 17. They both have to do with bank 1 engine position system performance bank one we'll look these up in service info and then exhaust camshaft position correlation bank one this one says failed current this one says passed okay uh, clear DTCs yes okay no more check engine light let's see if on data stream camshaft position data if the cams are now phasing Okay, so here we have exhaust cam position angle bank 1, and this is the variance for bank 1, angle bank 2, variance for bank 2. Same on the intakes. If I just rev it up, nothing happens. Is this thing going to phase them, or does it need a, a key cycle? Let's see. Shut the engine off. Turn the engine back on. Still no check engine light. Is our live data still updating here? We're still all zeros. We power break it. So I bet we don't even have to go for a test drive because I'm sure the code is probably pending. It won't phase the cams until it runs the test and boom, right there, 008, instant. So we can test drive, it's probably going to be a little sluggish because the cams aren't phasing at all. Um, we'll pull it in the shop and hook up the four channel Pico scope to all four cams. We have a known good, I think it'll match from a 2009 Traverse and also a 2008 Suzuki um, XL7 V6, same engine, and see if bank one is shifted, it, you know, it's fussing about bank one. Alright, let's do a little acceleration here. Yeah, it's sluggish. It's supposed to have like 50 more horsepower. 
but if you haven't driven one of these, you might think this is normal. It's not bad. I don't know if it's going to shift to a higher gear here. So I'm going to keep driving for a while, and then we'll put the scope on it. Okay, so after the test drive, the 17 code also came back, so 8 and 17. Let's uh, see where we want to hook up the oscilloscope. Alrighty, took a couple minutes. I got four channels hooked up on the Pico scope, and we're going to compare all four cam sensors. So channel 1 is bank 1 intake, channel 2 bank 1 exhaust, channel 3, bank 2 intake, channel 4, bank 2 exhaust. So the car right now is not setting any codes for bank 2, but it is setting a code for bank 1. And you know, just going by the wiring diagram, pin 7, 34, 33, and 9. You can print out a pinout. And so all four channels are hooked up to the four cam sensors. Now the waveform I want to compare it to is from a 2009 Chevy Traverse that had a P0018 trouble code and you'll have to watch that video but what we're looking for is the two intake cams, bank 1 and bank 2, to line up pretty well pretty close and the two exhaust waveforms to line up. You can see the yellow trace is advanced compared to the red trace so that was why the P0018 code was setting and you'll have to watch the video to see exactly why we got this waveform but anyways the intakes should line up, the exhaust should line up and then exhaust to intake you want to see this little pulse right in the middle of the big pulse you see it's kind of symmetrical so that's the known good this had new chains put on but there was a problem with um, bank two. Uh, let's see, exhaust. I think it was bank two exhaust. That's what the code was set setting for. But anyways, let's start the car and see what the waveforms look like. All right, scope is rolling. Let's just fire it up, run it for a few seconds, and shut her down. That's all we need. All right, so let's look at this data. So the blue and the green are the two intakes, bank one and bank two, I grouped them together. And we can see that they are pretty much on top of each other. That's, that's great. So what about the exhaust? They're definitely shifted. Um, but I think I was mistaken on the known good waveform here on the 2009 Traverse. Let's take a look at these exhaust waveforms. Put them on top of each other here. So the code that it was setting was a P0018 for the bank 2 intake. And you can see here the intakes that was like 10 degrees off. That was the code. It was not fussing about the exhaust, so these exhausts should be known good. So what I want to do on the traverse here is get a measurement of you know, bank 1 and bank 2. We'll get our degree rulers, and let's go off of bank 1. So big, big, small, small. So that's one. That's 720 of the engine, or one rotation of the camshaft, correct? And now we can use the degrees and say that bank two is leading bank one by about 21 degrees. This is known good. So let's write that down and then take a look at this Cadillac. Alright, so looking at the Cadillac waveform, let's compare bank one exhaust, that's the red trace to bank two exhaust. So it's fussing about 
bank one exhaust the red trace um, here I put put in the cursors and you can see the Delta is 26 degrees instead of 21 degrees like it was on the traverse hmm so it's saying the red trace is off and the yellow trace is good okay that's interesting so if the yellow trace is good let's see that hump occurs about 30 degrees after the intake pulses the bank 2 is good here and let's look at the traverse too many windows the traverse um, both exhausts are known good here and the known good intake is on bank 1 which is the blue trace about 36 degrees okay versus 31 degrees <sighs> 36 degrees versus 30 degrees bank 2 exhaust does that make any sense? Let me think about this and we'll come to a conclusion here. By the way, looking up code descriptions, P008, Engine Position System Performance, it says the ECM tests for misalignment between both camshafts on one bank of the engine and the crankshaft. The misalignment would be an idler sprocket or for either bank or at the crankshaft. Once the ECM learns the position of both camshafts on one bank of the engine, the ECM compares the learned values to a reference value. So this is like if both cams are shifted on one bank. Um, there is a technical service built in here. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 8, and 9. SRX... I guess 2004-2014 um, so these engines may exhibit two or more of the following DTC's 16, 17, 18, 19, 8 or 9 we have 17 and 8 if the above concern is present check for loose timing chains or tensioners the reluctor for the crankshaft sensor on the crankshaft may have moved oh my word If the reluctor is moved and then replace the crankshaft, oh my gosh, I hope we're not going there. <laughs> that would be honestly ridiculous. So they show you where that sink notch is supposed to be. Um, so if I don't find anything obviously wrong with cam to cam waveforms, we're going to add the crank waveform to this. We're going to actually do it right now, just take a capture. And see if that sync notch is way off, and maybe the computer just checks one bank and says, we're done, we're not even checking the other bank, or something along those lines. Um, because if you think, if the crankshaft reluctor wheel was shifted, it would set all the codes, not just two. Um, but TSB says we might just have two codes. Alright, so I moved channel one, which was bank one intake, to the crankshaft position sensor. We know the intakes align, so we'll grab one of those and put it on the CKP, run it again, and compare it to the Traverse. All right, here we go. And shut her down. All right, so on the known good Traverse, I want to measure from the sink notch to the bank one intake cam. Now here it's the red trace. I'm sorry I wasn't consistent. But we just want to measure this in degrees. So 7 degrees, the red trace notch here, the rising edge, after the start of the sink notch. Now, the Cadillac, we're looking at the green trace. 
the rising edge of the green trace is 14 degrees after the start of the sink notch. So I'm going to write that down 14 degrees after start of sink notch. So basically 14 versus 7 here. So that cam is retarded with respect to the crank notch. So the crankshaft reluctor wheel has not shifted here. It's very close. It does look like chain stretch. Okay? So if the cams are retarded with respect to the crank, remember here's the layout of the timing chains. It's three chains. So this is the crank. We're looking at the front of the engine here. So bank one is passenger side, bank two is driver side. So the primary chain drives these two idlers, and then each idler drives the secondary chains for each bank respectively. So what you're seeing here, compared to the known good, bank one intake, this is minus seven degrees. Okay. Can we write down the numbers for all the all the cams? You would think that the last cam on the last chain, because this Basically, to get from the crank to this cam, you need to go through this whole run of chain plus this whole run of chain. This would be the most retarded, the bank one exhaust. And that's that's the P0017 code. The shortest run of chain would just be bank two exhaust because you have to go here and here instead of all the way around and then all the way around. So we expect this one to be the least retarded compared to known good and this one to be the most retarded. Let me uh, write those numbers down and we'll see if that makes sense. Alright, so comparing to the Traverse, here's what we have. On bank 2, we're 10 degrees retarded, 7 degrees retarded, bank 1, 7 degrees retarded, 8 degrees retarded. So why the heck is it not setting any codes for bank 2? Must be computer logic, but according to the scope, we're retarded absolutely everywhere by the same amount. Ah, it would have made more sense if over here is more retarded than here, but it's not. Bank 2 exhaust is 10 degrees retarded compared to the crank sink notch. So that crank reluctor wheel could have shifted 10 degrees. That's a possibility. So, in cases like this, that's the hardest hardest call to make is do we say timing chain job or do we say new engine time because who's going to replace the crankshaft and 10 degrees you're not going to see that with a boroscope or you know visual inspection and no camshaft position sensors are not going to fix this engine huh if we could retard the crank signal if we could retard the sink notch by 10 degrees this car would run amazingly well I mean, it runs smooth. It, it runs fine. There's no bank-to-bank -bank imbalance. So, it does look like, in this case, cam-to-cam -cam seems to be pretty reasonable. But crank-to-cam is like 10 degrees difference. Again, it can make your head spin of, you know, looking at these. Okay, okay there's a 7 degree difference there. That's the intake minus 7 minus 7 and then exhaust bank 2 this one is 31 degrees retarded versus the intake this one's 36 degrees retarded versus the intake but how does that make you know this one's less retarded so it's more advanced versus the intake cam so there's a 6 degree discrepancy between these two can chain stretch account for that in that short little run? Hmm. I just want to give an answer to the customer and I can't really make heads or tails of what exactly is going on here. Alright, so I found another saved waveform from four years ago on a 2008 Suzuki XL7 V6 uh, that had, 
I don't remember exactly which codes I had, but also timing codes. It was running in just default mode. And I just want to compare bank one to the sink notch intake and exhaust. So we have about 16 degrees and 75 degrees. And then bank two intake and exhaust again about 16 degrees and this one is about 50 degrees so very very close figures here so this one's just a hair farther up this this uh, Cadillac but all the numbers match up exactly and that one I just told the customer, hey, you can keep driving it in lip mode unless you want to do an expensive timing chain job. Again, they're on a budget, so as far as I know, they're still driving it. <laughs> like, this was four years ago. Um, so that's it. it. It does need a set of chains because what are the chances that these crank reluctor wheels would have jumped exactly, whatever, seven degrees on both of these cars? Not likely at all. So that's it. That's my final call. Needs needs timing chains. Just for these codes. It runs smooth. It doesn't rattle. But that's it. So it's only setting codes for bank one for some reason. I wish I had a report saved because I had a hard drive failure. And since then I've been backing stuff up, but this is 2020. So I could take a look. But I'm not sure I'll be able to recover those files. But needs change, so that's the final verdict. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.